I thought last week's video of what car you would buy with a theoretical budget of $60,000 was a lot of fun, and you guys seemed to enjoy it, so I decided to ask everybody again for a new budget. And this time, I thought we would do $10,000. I know that that was kind of a pushback or a criticism of the $60,000 C8 Corvette car trek budget is that it wasn't quite as relatable, even though I am continually astonished by how many new cars are sold each day with an MSRP over 60 grand. It's crazy how expensive brand new cars have gotten for just average minivans and trucks and everything else. But at the same time, I thought we'd try something lower. So 10 grand seems pretty achievable. And there's a lot of really, really wild, wacky, and cool cars that you could buy. I certainly love at that price point a Honda S2000, a cheap E46 M3. And maybe the most interesting choice that I really like is a Maserati Coupe or Spider from 2002 to 2006. I have not yet found a stick one in that price range. I would love to, but at the very least, I just think it's the most interesting and cool, certainly an Italian sports car, that you could buy in that price range. And so that would probably be my pick, but these are what my friends chose. This one's easy for me. I would buy a 1995 E36 M3. It's crazy when you start searching for these used M3s online for a 95. They range from $10,000 all the way to $150,000 for a lightweight, which is absolutely ridiculous. The coolest car you can find for 10 grand, for me, is not even a car. I mean, I could have chose a C4 Corvette or, you know, a cheap Porsche or whatever, but for me, how about a 2000 Ford Lightning SVT 5.4 supercharged making 360 horsepower? Well, that's a tough one because you really can't get a whole lot. But I did some homework and there was a car that I used to own that I thought might be possible if I found one maybe close to $10,000. And lo and behold, here it is. It is the E46 BMW M3. Check this out, you guys. I even found one on Auto Trader in Canada for 14,000 Canadian dollars. You do the exchange rate, that's barely over 10,000 USD. And we've got a beautiful red example here. I love this car and I used to own one, white with red interior. In fact, same interior as this. This is my neighborhood, people. I was raised poor. See that Volvo back there? You can have that for 10 grand. I recommend it, except it's not for sale. Especially not since it's all ready to go back racing again as soon as this virus thing blows over. For 10 grand, I tell you what, the American 911. Yeah, I'm crazy. The nicest Corvair you can find with dual downdraft, Three barrel Webers, close ratio, four speed, quick ratio steering. It's a rear engine, air cooled, flat six, made in America, beautiful swoopy body. And for a lousy 10 grand, you can't even buy a decent Honda Civic for that. You can get a fantastic rear engine, air cooled, 911 esque Chevrolet Corvair, 65 to 69. So my first choice at this price point is easily the Honda S2000, but just for fun, I'm gonna choose an obscure retro-styled roadster that looks more like a 1950s cartoon car, the Figaro. It's got a really vintage look, it's tiny, kind of a convertible, and most people don't have a clue what it is. For me, it's a 1974 Toyota Celica. Now these cars were brought into the United States to compete against the Ford Mustang. They were lighter, they had better power to weight ratio, and they had a heck of a lot more style than the early 70s Ford Mustangs did. What would I buy for 10 grand? Well, if I was still in my 20s, I'd buy a Honda S2000. If I was in my 60s, I'd buy a Corvette C5, but it would have to be a ratty one for under 10 grand, and I don't like ratty cars. If I was in my 70s, I would buy an R129 SL500. But since I'm in my mid 30s and I already own it, of course, I'll go with this. The car that I would buy for $10,000 is actually a car that I'm in the market for right now. It has an inline six, screams at over 8,000 RPMs, and is from BMW Motorsport. That is an E46 M3. The car is absolutely incredible. Come on, value, performance, and just a fun car to drive. That's my nomination for under 10 grand. For $10,000, my first choice would be American, a 2010 Ford Mustang GT with the 4.6 V8 engine. I may be a bit biased because my first sports car was a 16.50.
My choice for a $10,000 car is without a doubt, a uh, first gen Porsche Boxster S. So 250 horsepower, fantastic sounding, uh, flat six behind your ears, top down, great steering, one of the best handling cars out there. So $10,000, the answer becomes a little bit trickier because you want to avoid any ratty cars. Uh, you want some reliability, of course. And, if, and the thing that you have to have, in my opinion at least, is rear wheel drive. And so I'm gonna say that accepting the obvious, which is an MX-5 Miata of some sort, right? Preferably one's track prepped. I would go either E36 or E46 M3. I might skip the E46. I know it's a lot more car, having had two of those myself. I know that S54 is a little bit suspect reliability wise. So I think final answer, E36 M3. Now you can go full Arnie Toman and buy yourself one of the most pristine IROC Camaros on the planet, or you would do what I would do. Buy yourself a 2005 to 2008 Dodge Magnum RT. Now not the SRT, the RT has a little bit better seat, 5.7 Hemi, enough room for the fam and kids. You can put a surfboard and two by fours in the back and you'd be jamming down the road with Hemi power. For 10 grand, is it possible to get something that you could roll up next to a Ferrari and people will look at your car? Yes. Something that's easy to work on and fun to drive. Yes. Something that's cheap to hot rod and seats four and weighs 2,000 pounds. Yes. Something that you can lay the windshield down, take all the doors off and lower the roof. Yes. What is that thing? The Volkswagen Type 181, known in the United States as The Thing. For 10,000 bucks, the car that I'm gonna go with is the Corvette C5. The reason being, when I was a kid, when I was about 16 years old, I had a calendar with a bunch of different supercars from around the world on it, including the Lamborghini Diablo SV, which is still one of my dream cars. And on one of those pages was the Corvette C5. And I just remember thinking how cool it was that an American car was featured in the same calendar as these uh, really exotic cars. And I thought, why would anybody spend that much money on a Lamborghini when you could get a C5? I had to pick two. I like choice, I can't pick just one. And I picked one from Germany and one from America. And I happen to own both of them. So from Germany, the 2005 Audi S4. This is a six speed V8, all wheel drive. This one happens to be a convertible if you don't like convertibles. I'm pretty much more of a hard top person too, but I found this one at a great deal. And it's an iconic car. And then from America, if you like a little bit more grumble, you got the C4 Corvette. Now this is the 1995, one of my more favorite shapes because it's got the rounded butt, but it's also target top, exposed suspension, and come on guys. Flip, flip up freaking <laughs> headlights. Best sports car for under 10 grand. Uh, it's a tough one. I mean, just, just off the top of my head, I really can't think of anything. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like it's so close. I can almost, I can almost feel it. But you got me at I, I don't know. I don't know. Ten thousand dollars, sports car, convertible, manual, mid-engine, Porsche Boxster. For a budget of $10,000, i would really love to get an early 2000s Audi TT Roadster with a manual transmission and all-wheel drive. It is 225 horsepower, but it only weighs about 4,000 pounds, so it's a pretty quick little car. Here's one car that no one's talking about. It's the 2003 to 2004 Audi RS6. I know it's a four-door car, but it's still a sports car at that. You get them all day, every day for 10 grand and under. And with the simple tune, you could have 550 horsepower and almost 600 foot-pounds of torque. Check one of those bad boys out. Okay, so the question was, what could you buy? Or what would you buy for 10 grand? I'm gonna do one better than that. I'm gonna show you what I did buy for 10 grand. The 1974 Fairlane 500, giving it all that late 70s car kind of vibe. V8, 302, lovely to drive, cool to look at. Best performance car for $10,000. Now this price point is my jam. 
by far the best car you can get that's fun for $10,000 has got to be the Chevy Caprice PPV. It's basically a four-door Corvette. 355 horsepower from the factory, LS motor. I mean, you're a cam and headers away from 400 horsepower. If you're buying a sports car for $10,000 or less, you have come to the right guy. First of all, there's only one good choice. It makes 300 horsepower, 330 foot-pounds of torque. If you look carefully, you can find the six-speed manual transmission. It's rear-wheel drive, two-door. It's got a Targa roof, and it looks amazing. You can find it on Facebook Marketplace and even Craigslist, and that is the late C4 Corvette from 1992 to 1996 with the LT1 engine. They're reliable, and who cares if people call it a redneck Ferrari? It's got a fiberglass hood, so you can take a date out under a starry night, put a blanket, lay down on the hood and the windshield, and have the time of your life. My pick for this week's $10,000 car challenge would be the car on my right. 1974 Triumph TR6. It's a British sports car made in the late 60s, early 70s. It's a straight six, two and a half liter, rear wheel drive, four speed manual. At $10,000, the only car you should buy is a third generation Toyota Supra. You can get really good clean driving examples around the $10,000 mark. Some of them have already been swapped with the 1JZ or 2JZ. They look amazing, ride incredibly comfortable, are very capable. They are so amazing. I actually have two. What better than a 1988-89 something right in that era? IROC Z. That was the car to have if you were from New Jersey and New York where I grew up from. That was the king of all cars. And $10,000 will get you a pretty nice one nowadays. One of my favorite cars under $10,000 has been a car that I've owned multiple times over and over again. And it is the 2001 XJR Jaguar. That's right, a four-door all-metal Jaguar that's actually been discontinued for quite some time and new models have come out all plastic, but that particular car for that year with the R1 package is one of my all-time favorite cars and it can be bought and has been bought many times under $10,000. So you asked me, what car would I buy for $10,000? And uh, it's quite an easy question actually because I've just bought a Lamborghini Diablo replica and it's got a 6 litre V8 in it, it's on a Pontiac Fiero chassis, Porsche gearbox, so all the power and all the fun um, and none of the monies. My few choices are the Mazda Miata for $10,000 or under, you just can add some suspension upgrades and then it's amazing. Or you could do a 350 or 370Z and also a 2011 Mustang GT. All have incredibly fun driving experiences. And if you look hard enough, you can find them for $10,000. The best sports car for about $10,000. This is easy. It's clearly the 2003 to 2006 E55 AMG. These cars came with the amazing M113K supercharged V8 engine, ultra reliable and very underrated from Mercedes. They claimed it at 469 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, but we all know they were lying. They made much more than that, and the best part is, with a few simple modifications like a pulley tune and exhaust, you can gain about 100 horsepower. All right, Rob Ferretti here, and honestly, I don't think it's a question. Best sports car for $10,000? Gotta be the C5 Corvette, hands down. It's fast, it's fun, it's reliable, it looks good. You wanna make it faster, funner, less reliable? You can do that too, it holds a lot. Thank you all so much. Those were some great ideas and certainly many that I never would have thought of on my own. Let us know in the comments what you would buy for a $10,000 budget. And as always, thank you to Premier Financial for sponsoring this month's videos and this video as well. Premier offers amazing leasing options for vintage and exotic cars, and you can contact them today to get pre-qualified to figure out what kind of buying power you have for your own dream car. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of cars kind of be offered at some uniquely low price points, and I don't know that we're necessarily done with that. So it's best to know what you can buy, know what you can offer, and go in fully committed, ready to make a deal. And hey, you might get an even better deal or an even shrewder deal on your dream car than you ever imagined.